You guys like money? I know I do. Well, part of the process is... Converting your quarters into cash. Now, the nice thing is, if you do have a certain bank, <clears throat> you can get free Coinstar. Super important. Definitely do not waste your money at a Coinstar at the grocery store. Do not pay for a Coinstar. They're going to take 10%. They're going to take so much of your profit away. You cannot afford to do that. I have a... I know certain banks. I am fortunate. Shout out to my girl, Dee Dee, finally referencing. Uh, OC Credit Union. Offering, uh, well, pretty, practically like free membership. It's like $5 or something, like super affordable. And then on top of that, you get free corn star. Go straight into your account. I mean, does it get any better than that? I couldn't believe that so few banks offered Coinstar. Like, you're about, you're all about money, and you guys don't have Coinstar. How's that possible? It's like, dude, you're a bank. You should be a full service money place, right? Another thing is, I, you know, I end up with these foreign coins. I'm like, you guys take these foreign coins. They're like, no, we don't, we don't take these foreign coins. I'm like, you don't take foreign coins. You're a bank. All you do is money. All you should do is take every form of currency I have. Find one way to, to use it. Or, you know, it's like, dude, I don't care if it's from Canada like, all around the world, t like, take my money. Your bank. It's your job. It's your job. To take my money. A little disorganized over here. Organized, yes, with these containers, but I'm sure there's a better method. But, you know, this one's working for now. I use these containers for my keys, for the quarters. Uh, very useful. It's always nice to have an empty container in case you need to pull candy out and store it somewhere. Pull these keys out. I labeled my one of my keys the other day. I was like, nice job. Because nothing nothing worse than uh, <clears throat> getting to a location and having to try out 10, 20 different keys just to see which uh, machine it belongs to. Yes, I need more time. Staying organized <clears throat> helps with the saving gain on your time, along with your sanity. And it's all about the systems in place that you create to make your job easy yet efficient. You would think seeing how much money I made in quarters would be my favorite part of this job, but it's not. Setting up new locations, I would say, is my favorite. Each location I set up gets me one step closer to financial freedom. 
I do have some interesting numbers to break down because I am shopping for a home, about to buy it, purchase a home. And so I'm comparing the numbers to the profit that I would make every month on my rental property compared to the profit that I would make on my candy machine business. And it's actually fascinating um, when broken down. Because what it comes down to is based on the, on numbers, a certain amount of these candy machines equals a rental property. Which I personally find fascinating and motivating to know like, okay, this is real. Like this, like if I only need a couple of paid off houses, to be financially free. These are great for quarters too. Well, if a certain amount of candy machines was equivalent to a rental property, okay, well then we can factor that into the mix. I need four rental properties? Well, based on my numbers, I was like, and we'll talk more in depth on this, but I was like, okay, if I bought a house for 150 grand, and if I paid it off after tax and insurance, forget the maintenance for right now, let's just say I get 1500 on rent, and, and the tax and the insurance, let's just say, cost me uh, like 300 bucks and I made like a pure profit of like 1200. Well, the question is, okay, if I make 1200 every month, how much is that? How much am I making every day? And I already broke down that number and what it, com what it comes out to is $40 a day. So then I, I got to ask myself, and that's on a house of like 150 grand, 1500 in rent. I mean, if we lower the numbers, down to like a thousand or eight hundred, that would still be considered a good rental property for eighty, a hundred, right? And, and and you know, there's that spectrum. <clears throat> but for this example, it's forty dollars a day. Forty dollars a day that you're making to make twelve hundred dollars in profit in a month. Now we're not factoring if you know we're saying if it runs for fifteen hundred. We're not saying hey. What if it only rents for 14, which is a possibility, and we're not factoring the maintenance that we have to do. People say, oh, you should probably factor in maybe $200 a month in, in maintenance, give or take, 100, 150. So you could say, oh, maybe I'm only making 1,000. But let's just say, take that out of the equation. Um, well now, Not a bad pull right here, $240. Now, unfortunately, I don't have information on how long this 240, I, I still have a ton of quarters in my car, I believe. But you know, periodically, when I come to the coin star and do a collection, you're coming with me. And so we're keeping track, ultimately, of how much money we are making. Um, now I do, uh, all my laundry. Did we lose a couple of screws? Might have lost a couple of screws that fell through. Not a big deal. I have plenty of them. They definitely need a trash can over here. That's okay. Oh, there you are. So anyways, um, where was I? So yeah, we're, I do laundry with all the money that I make as well. And I just consider that the trade-off for the gas that I'm spending driving around 
setting these up, doing maintenance on them. And I think I, I think it's relatively fair. So that every time I do a cash out, I mean, we can really keep track of how much money I'm really pulling in. Um, but I just need to be more di diligent when it comes to the dates um, that I'm doing this um, and the frequency, right? To kind of get like a rough estimate uh, for the year, you know? Um... Because right now, I mean, I'm definitely spending, you know, more than I feel like I'm quote-unquote making. But remember, you know, this is an initiation process of getting set up, right? Uh, keep in mind, all these candy machines that I'm buying, I'm spending money on, they are worth money, right? Right? So it's not like you buy a candy machine and you're out 200 bucks. You buy a candy machine and now you have something that te technically is worth 200 bucks. The resale value obviously drops, unfortunately. I mean, the machines, I feel like, can stay good for a very long time, you know? I don't want to say forever, but it definitely feels like it's a possibility. Um, the resale value probably cuts about... 40 I would say percent give or take 40 to 50 percent um but still you bought 100 candy machines for $200 a piece that's $20,000 after you pay back with the money that you make you still have something that's worth 10 to 12 12 and a half thousand dollars right um, and, and so you, you own an asset that's working for you. It's a working asset making you money. Now to get back on, on track of this, uh, point that I want to get to, and we'll talk more about it later, but just kind of recap $40 a day, you're making $40 a day you're making um, on a rental property. Keep in mind, that's after it's paid off. So that means you have to pay off 150 grand to be making that $1,200, right? Let's just say um, $40 a day. So then I asked myself, okay, well, what would it take in candy machine uh, lingo terms um, to make that same $40 a day? The cool thing is I calculated $40 uh, divided by 25 cent poles came out to 160 poles. Okay? So at 160 poles, you're getting $40 in sales. Okay? Now remember, sales and profit are two different numbers. How much are we profiting? How much would it take to get there? Well, we have to take a combined average of the candy that we're selling. You know, interesting enough, I was doing the Starburst and based and it costs about three and a half cents per Starburst that it dispenses um, as far as the cost. So if you get two Starburst, so if you get two Starburst, it's costing seven cents. If you get three, it's costing roughly ten and a half cents. You get four, it's costing 14 cents. You get five, it's costing 17 and a half cents. And then on top of that, I'm giving five, five cents to the house on every 25 cent pull. So if you're getting five Starbursts, it's 17 and a half plus five, it's 22.5. You're making like two and a half cents, give or take, right? Um, if it dispenses four, you're making five and a half cents. If it dispenses three, you're making eight and a half cents. Two, and you're making uh, 11 and a, and a half, 12 cents, I wanna say. And so you have to take an average of those starburst to come up with a number, right? And you would get an average of two, three, four, five pieces, right? Take away the five, take away the two, Take away the four, take away the three, 
we're right there probably around three and a half. And so we could say maybe we're making about 10 cents, I would say, a pull on Starburst, give or take. We still need some more information on an average, you know? I did do that video where I did 80 pulls. We made about $22. We gave like four to the house, left us with 18. If we spent 10, we made eight. If we spent 11 on the container, we made seven. And those numbers definitely seem low and almost defeating, but they're not. And you, you need to, and you know, I, w I really want to touch base on this um, to motivate all of you along with myself because when you actually break it down, it's actually pretty good because keep in mind, what are the other two candies that we're keeping in there? Well, we're keeping Star uh, Skittles and we're keeping Specialty Gumballs. Both of those are more favorable than the Starburst. Um, I have to, I, I, cr I crunched the numbers on the Skittles and... I want to say you're making something around $15, $16 on a container after all said and done at around 10 to 12 pieces. And I was even crunching the numbers on, okay, at 10 pieces, at, at 11 pieces, 12 pieces. And I'll talk more about those numbers because I literally have it down to how much a single Skittle costs, right? Um, but the point is you're making at least 10 cents a pull on the Skittles, which actually, once again, doesn't sound like much, but it actually is really good. The gumballs are even better. Now they have gone up in the price if you want like a specialty pack, um, which I still recommend, or maybe doing some sort of blend and having a cheaper specialty mixed in with a more quality specialty. That's kind of what I was thinking to cut, cut to kind of average my cost and I was running those numbers. Cause right now I think a, uh, the best specialty gumball uh, in bulk is costing about eight cents, eight, eight and a half cents. You could drop down on specialty um, and get maybe down to about seven cents. Now I know when you're thinking, oh man, why are we talking about penny, penny and a half? Because it adds up over time. That's what it all comes down to, right? Um, but even at eight cents, let's just say, plus the five cents VIG to the house, uh, that's what, 13 cents? So you're making 12 cents, okay? So the Skittles are making, let's just say 10. And even if the Starbursts were only making eight, and the gumballs are making 12, well then we have an average of 10 cents, roughly, for the machine as a whole. Every time someone pulls, I make 10 cents. That's after the cost of the candy. Uh, <clears throat> and so, 10 cents a pull, okay, well 10 pulls is a dollar. Well, if 10 pulls is a dollar, then a hundred pulls is ten dollars. That means two hundred pulls, twenty dollars. Three hundred pulls, thirty dollars. Forty, four hundred pulls, forty dollars. So that means if you got four hundred pulls in a month then you're making $40 a month. No, you're making $40 a day. Shit, am I doing this right? 400 pulls a day, okay? That's what we need. Is 400 pulls a day to make $40 a day in pure profit. I know that seems extreme. To get 400 pulls every single day, what would it take to get 400 pulls a day? 400 pulls a day. Okay. Well, if we had 100 machines, that would be four pulls per day at each machine. If we had 200 machines, that would only be two pulls a day. 
right? If we had 400 machines, it would be one pull a day, right? So, you know, I don't want to go up as far as saying that I need 400 machines, but let's just say 200 machines that did two pulls a day. One pull from every 200 location, that's 200 cells. One more pull, that's 400 cells every day. Okay, and that's $40 in pure profit. And that would make us $1,200 in pure profit a month. Now keep in mind 200, I was doing the math, 200 candy machines at about $200 a pop comes out to about $36,000, I want to say. Uh, 200 what, or 40,000 maybe, give or take, maybe 40 grand. And so you're looking at about a $40,000 investment to get 200 locations, right? But keep in mind, now you have an asset that's worth 20 to 30,000 and it's generating you income at $40 a day if it got about two pulls a day. Now I'll tell you this, I set the bar realistically low because I'm confident that if you have the right location, you should be getting at least two pulls a day. Because remember, if we did 25 cent pull, single pull a day times 10 days is 250, 20 days, 30 days to round out the month, 250, 250, 250, that's only 715 cells for the month. We want better locations than that, right? That would be a D location. No, we're looking for C or better locations, right? Zero to five is an F, five to 10 is a D, 10 to 15 is a C, 15 to 20, right? Is a B, 20 to 25 is an A. So we're looking at making twice that. We're looking at making two pulls a day, which puts us at the $15 mark in sales a month right? So if you're not making two pulls a day, you don't want that location to begin with. Um, and so it's realistic to say that two pulls is totally feasible. I'm confident that some of my locations do double or triple that in a day easily, right? So anyways, digest all this fascinating information, two pulls a day, 200 locations. Um, you're making $40 a month. Now remember, that 150K property cost me $150,000. I'm telling you that I can make the same amount of money off a $36,000 investment, right? Um, yeah, plus candy. But remember, you're getting that money back. So, you, you know, it's, it, it, it's countering it out. Uh, it's countering it out, right? Canceling each other out, I should probably say. Um, after kind of that initial setup, right? Um, now, obviously, there's going to be more work involved because you're going to have to go find 200 locations around you that are willing to set up a candy machine, right? And then on top of that, you are going to have to service these machines, right? Um, the house... You could hire a property manager. You can hire people to go do the servicing, obviously, for you because it's probably going to be out of state, like what I'm doing. Um, and it's going to be a little. It's going to be a lot more hands off. You know, I was calculating. I'm going to have to spend 40 to 60 days a year to service these candy machines, uh, give or take. But see. All of it adds up to financial freedom and getting out of the birdcage, which is all I care about. I, I actually enjoy working on my candy machines. I like the, 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 the work I do. I cruise around, I listen to music, I uh, listen to audiobooks, I learn, and then what do I do? I service the candy machines, put in more candy, wipe them down, make sure they're dispensing correctly, and collect the money? You know? Um, and so, yeah. $36,000 is a lot less than $150,000, right? So you put in the legwork, you get 200 locations uh, that generate you two pulls a day, and guess what? You have something that's equivalent to a 150K property that's roughly making you $1,200 paid off uh, $1,200 a month. Now remember, I only need, let's just say four properties 
uh, fully paid off to be financially free. 1200 1200 1200 1200 it's 48,000, right? That's uh, 4800. You're looking at about 5 grand a month. You're looking at about 60 grand a year. Easily live off that. So if my goal is to get four paid off properties, well I can change that goal to three paid off properties and 200 candy machines. Two paid off properties and 400 candy machines, right? Um because guess what? There's only so much resource that I can come up with to to get these houses and to pay off these houses, realistically. I mean, I was thinking the trade-off, I could go work my ass off, try to pay these off as soon as possible, but still, um, there's only so much I can come up with. The nice thing is about the, this candy machine, it's, it's so much easier accessibly, like accessible to me being able to come up with the cost and proactively put out machines. And I, I, I do like that feeling of being proactive and, 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 and being able to kind of carve uh, my success. So anyways, more to talk about, but exciting stuff happening. Anyways, I'll let you go for now. Until I see you on the next one.